Good morning, good evening, good afternoon everybody. Today what we're doing here is I'm going to show you guys how to set up your CSP for low medium spec PCs and also depending on your GPU and CPU being better or worse which options you should enable or disable or at least how to find them. The other thing that matters too is if you're drifting online in the lobby versus free roaming and just driving around there are settings that you do want to change in particular to those servers so I'm gonna start with that and what I mean by that is I'm gonna go down to particles effects and if I'm driving and going through traffic and stuff I don't wanna see a bunch of grass kicking up dirt smoke sparks and everything in the in front of me from other people driving on the road off the road and hitting things so I come in here and I turn off sparks I turn off smoke I turn off fireworks I turn off solid pieces of dirt bits of grass and shards and collisions and such and now if I'm drifting I'll turn some of this stuff back on because you want to see tire smoke when you're drifting. You want to see when people are getting to the track limits and all that grass and dust and dirt kicking up, right? So that's a big differential between drifting and driving in free roam. That's one of the big settings that you can change there. The other thing I like to change is things that I'm never really going to see while I'm inside of the car that will not by one setting make a big difference but by a conjunction of settings make a difference and things like that are for example brake disc effects I don't care to see that I almost will never see that while I'm driving I'll turn off the colorful shadowing of the cars that have the racing banners that are transparent that put color through them with the Sun I turn off grass effects again this is something on a smaller map or maybe drifting or a small free roam map that has nice grass maybe you do want to turn that on but for the most part I'll use no grass effects we won't use rain effects for the sake of just being low end PC medium end PC I turn off surfaces effects I turn off tires effects and that gives us at least a start at what we want to accomplish the next thing that matters is there are a couple things in GUI that of course by themselves might not make a difference but again in conjunction with everything everything will make a difference in the end of things so in GUI you can do things like hide CPU warning hide the camera message on the top hide system messages hide the ping in the top right corner you can take off the year of the names you can put a simplified render option on and the more you go through things like this the more you will see things that you can add or take out of the app bar as well that you might not want and just save a bit of UI rendering and in your render stats in the game you will notice that everything to do with UI does in fact make a very small impact on your FPS and your general performance as a whole not one specific setting but as a whole it will make a difference so we will go over extra effects but because it's really obvious about extra effects we're gonna leave this one to the end and we're just gonna go over a couple small things with something like graphics adjustments in graphics adjustments you can adjust a few things to your liking that you can stand the quality of so for example you can raise or lower the car LOD limit if you're ever driving and you notice that car details are popping in too closely to you and it looks like they flicker because they load in the next detail then you can increase that and it will fix that problem if you notice things popping in on the track and things aren't loading in quick enough on the track ahead of you you can increase your track LOD LOD is level of detail and there's a couple different ones that get loaded in and when they load in and they're too close you can see the sudden change in the car you can do the same thing for trees and you can also use an increase of this setting here to make it so 
there's more cars that load in the level of detail while in a traffic server. Now this might not be the most low-end PC friendly to increase all this, but maybe you're okay with decreasing some of these settings and that way you can save a bit more performance. You might have a not good visual, you might notice the difference big time, but if you lower it to what you can stand, you will get better performance. The next thing here is the post-processing anti-aliasing. You can pick whichever one runs better for you. If you want to test just this, obviously go into the game, boot up render stats, open up content manager, go to CSP on another screen or just in the background and do a test run on the same map in the same settings and just change these and see what it does or you can just disable it as a whole if you don't want to have that enabled and it makes a big difference for you you can do that as well I'm gonna leave the rest of this alone you can decrease the render scale if you make sure that you're in windowed mode and not in full screen you can decrease render scale it will make your game more blurry but let's say you're playing on a 1440p monitor you can make the game render scale down to let's say 80 percent and you can also use AMD fidelity super resolution here FSR and let's say you put this on and you just want to go to 67 percent let's say you're on a 4k monitor this will put you somewhere just above 2k where it's rendered and then it gets upscaled to 4k it doesn't look as good but hey it's there and um, you know you can use that to boost your FPS as well you can do the low res drivers low res cockpits for other cars in first person view high drivers for distant cars all of this type of stuff will make a general impact over time as you add more and more settings that decrease things you will get more FPS and these are the types of things that aren't going to make your game look terrible just because you have these settings enabled doesn't do anything with your weather doesn't do anything with the Sun doesn't do anything with the shadows these are all settings you can change that will make a general impact a, a big difference over time the more you experiment, the more things you change, the better it gets. If you go into lighting effects on a lower end PC, you definitely want to have dynamic shadows off. And I always turn down the brightness. It's just how I like it. You can disable trees lighting over here. You can also disable enable lighting and reflections, which is expensive. But you can keep the lighting effects on. Maybe you want to go no dynamic lights in the mirror and have cars casting light even lower. If you're drifting you can have this pretty low as many cars as are in the server type of deal but if you're going through traffic at nighttime with your headlights on you want to increase this setting. It's important that you increase this setting so your headlights hopefully don't flicker on and off on cars in front of you while you're driving. So I keep it somewhere around 20 usually works out pretty good for me. Neck effects is all personal preference. Here's mine. If you want a minimal tilt, minimal g-forces, just a little bit of bump in the car, a little bit of visible body roll, a little bit of drifting when you're when you're going sideways, a little bit of that rear end kick out. These are really good settings for that. I have no problem if you pause here, copy these settings, and you know, just do what you want with them these are minimal neck effect settings they're nothing crazy it's really just a nice minimal setting to play and if you're someone that don't use the wheel in the cockpit you'd like to have no wheel you'll really see how the car is behaving with this and then we go to reflections effects you want to make sure that you are on 512 by 512 and that's the end of it there make sure this is off off. Shadowed wheels keep active. Skid marks effects, I always turn this down unless I'm on a drift server or something and I want to see all those skid marks and I'll turn it up. But for the most part I turn this down, I don't put advanced blending on. 
or anything like that. Smart mirror, you can go to custom render distance and you can turn down the render distance to whatever you can stand. The lower the render distance in your mirror, a little bit better performance. And also you gotta keep in mind, if you put your custom render distance lower and you go back to lighting effects and your rear mirror quality, you have no dynamic lights on, these are things that again, together as a whole, will make a bigger difference than if you just have one or two settings turned off. You gotta come through here and see what you like on, what you like off, and just take the time to read what you're changing and pay attention to the settings that change in the game and how it actually looks in the game. Now another thing here is smart shadows. If you want really not very detailed shadows and you're okay with that, or let's say you're not really running much at all, you can turn down the overhang multiplier, you can turn down the cascade distance, you can turn on and off here, whatever you want to do, you can lower to the, the shadow distance as a whole, and I recommend if you are changing these things, you go to a sunny environment on a map where there's trees, where you can see the shadows and the difference between the shadows and the road in front of you where the sun is shining, and also see a couple hundred meters ahead to see where your shadows are ending and how the shadows are looking. You can do all of this while you're in the game, you just have to open Content Manager in another window in Custom Shaders Patch and you can change most of these in the game. If your game crashes, all you have to do is reboot it and you're just able to continue on where you left off. Just make sure you note what setting crashed the game so you don't have to go through that again. Again, track adjustments is personal preference pretty much, however, you can take off dynamic amount of spectators, you can take off camera flashes, you can adjust the amount of spectators, you can hide crew, hide crew, hide all spectators, good to go, and you have another couple things here where snap tire grooves the surface, just read it, see what it says, I don't even know what that is, but we're just going to take it off for now. And then when we're back in the game, we can turn all this on and we can see what it does, what it looks like in the game, and see if we want to keep those on or off. Weather effects, again, this is something where, you know, you don't want to have full resolution on post-processing here if you're running a low-end PC. Maybe you don't want to occasionally ref re do the static reflections. I stuttered big time there. Brain glitched out. Compatible sky shader is a big one. It does tell you that if you're on a newer system, this might increase FPS by 2% if you disable it. Now, I don't know what the definition of new system is here, but that can make a difference. Extra sharp stars, cloud fidelity, extra visual effects. You can try and change a whole bunch of this stuff to get better performance in the game. Windscreen effects, activate it and remove dirt completely. and then you're pretty much set. Everything else that you need to look for is in general patch and extra effects and this is where things get a little bit complicated. So when you come down here I like to disable camera wobble, I like to make it so I only have a certain type of cameras that I can use. I stop the d-pad thing in pits, I stop the numbers from changing my turbo settings, these are all things that if you take these settings, you have to come back here and check out and see what I changed and what you want or don't want. Alright, that's the important thing here. Now, to get the best smoothness in the game, that's where this setting comes into play. So if you have, so let's say, a really good CPU and a bad GPU, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and come in here and pick the options that match your system. So for example, I have a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D and a 4080 Super. So my GPU is really, really good and so is my CPU, but I want the game to run more on the graphics card than the CPU to get the best smoothness and the best performance and not bottleneck anything. So what I'm gonna do is save my CPU time with this setting 
and it increased the GPU load. So I'm going to check that. The next thing I am going to do, because I want it all on my GPU because it's a good GPU, is I'm not going to check this because it will decrease the GPU load by adding CPU load, and I don't want that. Right, so that's all you have to do as you come through here. And then the biggest important thing is that we adjust the frame time to improve smoothness, load into the game, test our FPS with extra effects on, see if it works for you, how it's set up. If not, come back into here, turn off ambient occlusion maybe, maybe go to low settings for SSLR, maybe even just turn that off, maybe turn off motion blur turn off some extra stuff, you know what I'm saying, turn off the fog blur, maybe turn off volumetric headlights if you want, try and make it so the game runs good, and if you don't have extra effects on, then let's go ahead and just turn it off, and we'll just call it what it is. Now the important thing here is that you first load into the game with an unlimited frame rate. Play the game for a bit, see what you're getting, hopefully you're getting at least 60 FPS, Hopefully you're actually getting 80 or 90. And if you're getting 80 or 90 or more, you're going to limit your frame rate at just under the average that you're getting. So let's say you're getting about 125 FPS and you're ready to come back now and you drop down to like 115. Let's go ahead and limit it at 100. The game is pretty much always going to be able to stay at 100 or more FPS and because you went into general patch and you enabled the setting here, adjust frame time to improve smoothness, it's always going to try and keep it 10 FPS above the frame limit. That's why you look for your average, then just a little bit below your average and you set this to be just below your lowest average that you really find and that's how your game is going to maintain the highest frame rate that it can maintain. That's how the game is going to be as smooth as it can be. So I hope that helps you guys out. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here and finish off all of these settings for a low-end PC and then we're going to share them and see how much they improve your guys' performance and hopefully through this video and through help in the Discord, you can get your game to look good, even with the low-end settings. Have a good day, everybody. Take care.